Okay, so today's experiment is experiment number 11. And remember last time in experiment number 12, we found the specific heat of a metal. So this time we're gonna actually use calorimetry to find uh, a heat of solution. So it's a little bit different in the sense that we're gonna actually mix things and measure temperatures. And this time, instead of simply saying, okay, let's use negative Q of the metal is equal to Q of the water, we're gonna go ahead and just take and realize that whatever Q we measure from the water is gonna be opposite to the delta H of the solution. So setup's pretty simple. We'll, we'll go through it for you in a minute. But the calc is simply this. We're gonna take the mass times the specific heat times the delta T. In this case, we're gonna use a specific heat of water. And remember that delta T is the final temperature minus your initial temperature. And that is the temperature inside the calorimeter cup. For the mass though, and this is the most common mistake people make when they do this calculation, they only take the mass of the water. You actually have to take the mass of the water plus the ammonium nitrate, okay? Because that's the solution you're measuring the temperature of. Once you have that and you calculate Q, we can find the delta H of the solution by simply taking that the delta H solution is equal to the negative of the Q of water, okay? But ultimately, we want to make it a delta H for our chemical reaction. So to do so, we want to make it delta H per mole. So you're simply going to take that delta H you calculated and divide by the moles of ammonium nitrate that you used. So we'll go ahead and show you a setup and then we'll get going. Okay, so here's the setup, very similar to what we did with the uh, heat when we did the uh, specific heat of the metal. Uh, but this time we're gonna be using a stir bar and continuously stirring our solution. So I've got my styrofoam cup set here. I'm gonna put the stir bar in and then I've measured out 49 milliliters of water in my graduated cylinder, and we'll pour it into the cup. Now what we wanna do is we wanna start it stirring, so you turn on the stir motor, and it actually will start stirring the solution for you so that it'll continuously stir. And then we have our thermometer, and I'm gonna put it through a one hole uh, stopper so that it will hold in place and not touch anything inside the cup. We're gonna lower that down in there and take an initial temperature letting it just sit for a few seconds here to make sure that it's coming to equilibrium. And we have a temperature of 26.0 is our initial temperature. So I'll write that down, 26.0 degrees Celsius. Now we've weighed out 4.9971 grams of our ammonium nitrate, and I'm gonna add it to the cup. And I'm supposed to be taking temperature readings every 30 seconds, um, and we'll take a look and see how that goes. So we add that, and immediately we notice the temperature is going down. And we have a temperature of 19.4 right now. Let's go around. It's kind of stabilized at 19.0 as it's been changing. now at 18.8. And so what we notice with this is the temperature is going down. And so when you have a temperature going down, since you're observing the surroundings, this is an endothermic process because of the fact the solution is absorbing energy from the outside. Eighteen point eight, pretty much stabilizing there. And so we will take eighteen point eight as our final temperature, and that's what trial one looks like. Okay, so now that you've seen one trial. I actually did two other trials, and in trial two, we used a mass of 5.011 grams. It had an initial temperature of 26 degrees Celsius, and our final temperature was 18.5 degrees Celsius. For trial number three, I used 4.9923 grams, and once again, initial temperature was 26.0 degrees Celsius, and the final temperature is 18.7 degrees Celsius. With this information, you should be able to do the calculations for the lab experiment.